hello this is from Tia Bors from connect to soul with soul wisdom and today I want to talk about power I want to talk about how much of our power we give away on a daily basis and when I talk about power and giving away power I mean um, people talk about it all the time but I want to just address firstly what do we mean by power and what do we mean by giving it away so power when we use the word it's not power over anything it is power for me is, is an inner strength it's an inner um, sense of being uh, in a state of well-being and all is well with the world that gives me incredible confidence and strength and inner peace and that to me that is very powerful so what do we talk about power away what does it mean giving our power away well when we are empowered so when we uh, when we hold our power within ourselves it feels great we feel great we feel confident we feel at one with ourselves we feel at one with the world and things usually go pretty smoothly but when we give our power away instantly we don't feel the same so it's a feeling so when I'm talking about it today I really want you to understand that I'm looking for a feeling when we resolve this issue of giving our power away the only way to be able to do that is to constantly observe oneself and see when we feel less in vibrational frequency when we feel constricted when we feel diminished that is when we have given our power away to something other than ourselves but we can give our power away that way also depending on how we treat ourselves but we'll get to that so what are the most common ways that we give our power away unconsciously because if you were conscious you wouldn't do it at all would you because you just know and you go well I'm not going there but we do this all unconsciously through habits and conditioning so what do you think is the most common thing that you give your power away to most people think it's to relationships well I beg to differ I think that what we give our power away to most is fear you think about it we have this fear that is constantly being pumped into us we've got to be afraid of people stealing from us we have to be afraid of catching a cold we have to be afraid of not having enough money we have to be afraid of not um, passing our exams we are, you know we're constantly forced to address there is something to be afraid of so fear is the number one thing that we give our power away to every time that we lock our doors now I'm not telling you not to by the way I'm just telling you why we do it and how conditioned we have become but every time we lock our door it is as an unconscious fear of a stranger coming into our home and disturbing us either to steal us or to kill us or it depends on how great your fear is and how big your stories about it go right so even that is fear-based and therefore you're giving your power away to something unknown so it's always a fear of the unknown the what ifs you know what if somebody comes in in the middle of the night you know yeah what if um, it's 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 an unknown fear and it's very unlikely to occur yes it occurs sometimes but there are real fears and there are imagined fears and the power we give away are to imagined fears 99 percent of the time now i have lived in situations where fear was absolutely necessary and, and unavoidable because life was in danger when your life's in danger in the moment and it literally is not it might be or what if 
then yes fear becomes actually a great um, messenger but also it, it gives you an adrenaline that allows you to then you know take fight or flight so take flight or fight I think is how that goes so fear has incredible power over us for the slightest little thing you know I really want you to pay attention to um, what 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 let's talk about some really crazy fears um let's say that that you have an event right? well we're all coming towards christmas how many fears have you got around christmas or around the festive season whatever you might call it, it might be hanukkah it might be whatever you know um festive belief that you have that, that you celebrate to bring family together it doesn't really matter what it is but what are your fears around it you know, last in the last uh, video, I mentioned the woman that, that that wanted Christmas to be over with because she didn't like what she was doing. Well, what was she afraid of? She was afraid of um, not have, buying enough, not having enough money, not you know, whatever it was she was afraid of. It was the underlying motivation, and therefore she was powerless to it, and it made her exhausted. So, what is it about this festive season, for instance? What would make you fearful? Have I forgotten somebody? Oh, have I forgotten somebody? So what if you have? You know, give them a hug. Say, oh, I'll make it up. You know, we get so caught up in these things. Make a list. I live by my list. I cross them off. I'm like Father Christmas, you know. I make a list and then I cross them off as I go. And that is, I don't do the good or bad. I just have a list and I cross them off. Um, you know, are you afraid that you won't have enough food? Are you afraid that you can't um, that you can't cope with with all the the chaos that goes on around that we don't have to have? Have a look at are there any fears that are stopping you from enjoying this time of of the year? We're coming to the end of a year where we need to celebrate having what we have achieved, and we need to celebrate that hey we've made it, and and celebrate life itself. But no, we allow little fears to, um, to come in. So fear is the greatest thing that will bring you your power into powerlessness. Every time you turn on the television to watch the news, there is only one focus of news, and that is to be making you afraid. I don't think they realize that's what they're doing. But all the news is bad, which means that, oh, what if it happens to me? Oh, what if it happens to my friends? Oh, what fear. The moment that you get hooked into any of the media stories, the minute you have an opinion about it, it has your power. You can watch it by all means, like you're watching, you know, a, a screen that you know that you're not part of. But the minute that you have an opinion, you get engaged, you have an emotional attachment to it, it has your power so that to me is the first and the most um, unconscious power grabber now I want you to bring it into your consciousness and I'd like you every day to just consider how much of the day do I give even for a second my power away when you go to cook a meal, have you got for a minute a fear that it's not going to come out the way you want it? In that moment, the meal has your power. That It's that small. It, it's insidious. It just gets in underneath. Do you know the second most prevalent power grabber that has power? It frightens me. And, and the, oh, well, there you go. That just took my power. It doesn't actually frighten me. It amazes me. And I'm really, I look at it and I'm going, do you not get it? The thing that takes power away at the moment in this day and age is this lovely, this, oh, I threw it away. You know what I just, the, yes, throw it away. That was my phone, by the way. I look at people crossing the road. Things in their ear. Where is their life? Right? Where's your life when you do that? All the time. 
sitting next to somebody the other day while I was having lunch and the husband was on the phone to somebody, the wife was playing some sort of ins insidious, insidious kind of a game on her phone. And I'm like, where's your power? We are completely powerless to technology if we allow ourselves to be. Our phones have taken over our lives. And that is sucking the life out of you. Because life is alive. It's not in a box, even though I'm in a box that you're looking at. But I'm very alive. Okay. So just how much of your time are you spending on a device? Unconsciously, not presently, with you. You're giving your power away to it. Use it for what it's meant to be used for. I love technology. If I, it what didn't exist, I couldn't be doing this with you. I couldn't be reaching hundreds and hundreds of people just by talking into this lovely camera and sending it off into the ether. That, I love it. I love my phone because I have family overseas and I can, you know, WhatsApp and all of that. But I don't walk across the road with things in my ear going to do, 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 do. It does not have my power. I use it. I'm the power behind it. I use it for what I want to use it and then I put it away. And I'm conscious that it's really addictive and that it would be very easy for me to get hooked into it. Facebook, uh, there you go. How addicted are you to Facebook? How much of of the time do you spend in a in a virtual reality it's taking your power away from your life living it for you with you use it for what it's meant to be like i just you know i got a message on facebook from from one of my facebook friends and and somebody i actually know personally <laughs> because you don't know all the people on facebook personally um, and she asked people to stop sending these these um, messages, you know, these bulk messages of, of frivolous, ridiculous things, whatever they may be, games, or they may be, uh, I don't know what, but you know, I won't even, I don't look at them. I just delete them instantly because I, I only use Messenger to communicate directly to a particular person that I want to have a conversation with. And if not... It, I don't use it. It's not, you know, again, it has your power. People say, oh, you can use it for that. Oh, can I? Oh, let's do it. Have you thought about it? Have you thought about the impact? Have you thought about how much of your time it's taking? Time you could be spending living, you know, instead of da-da-da-da-da or da-da-da-da-da. So, electronics, you know, all the digital age, it's taking your power away. Now, what about the relationships? Do you allow your fear of being approved of, your fear of being liked, your fear of belonging? Does that take away your power? And then I think before we even get to the relationship with others, I would like to address the relationship with you. What is your self-dialogue like? Are you disempowering yourself by, you know, deprecating thoughts, um, you know, self, um, self-destroying messages? Are you constantly judging yourself? Are you constantly feeling not good enough? I believe one of the greatest disempowering systems, all the systems are disempowering that we live by, but I think education has a great deal um, to answer for. Because how often, you know, it's a, it's a not, not feeling good enough educational system. As long as the education system goes by ticks and crosses and, and numbers and having to have a certain amount of passes and failures before you could do what you want to do as long as you're being judged at all either by you or by somebody else that is taking your power away it's making you feel less than and anything that makes you feel less than takes your power away
You know, she got a smelly sticker and I didn't. Therefore, she must be better than I am. Instantly, power has gone over there. That person got a higher mark than me. That makes that person better and me less. No, it doesn't. Education is really doesn't have a clue about working out who is what. They just put into you what the governments of the world want to put into you. Has nothing to do with who you are inside, with your own inner talents and strength. It has nothing to do with the purpose of your soul. It has to do with following a curriculum that's designed by other people and if it doesn't suit your purpose, if your soul doesn't resonate with it and you don't somehow find it, you know, and you find enough inside of you to live up to their expectations, that doesn't mean a thing. It just means that you're on a different path and you will find it. In fact, you're probably on a much greater path. So education is not, you know, look, I love education. I love learning. I learn every day, but I learn what I choose. So for those of you who have children who are in school, get them through it. But please tell them that life begins after school. It's when they know, when they learn to use what they've learned and expand on it and to let go of the things that they've learned that does no longer serve them. It's that simple. It's a time of assessment. A time of going within and finding your talents and your strengths and to fly. Life is not about being told what you have to learn and what you have to do. Life is about exploring and, and finding yourself and expanding on that. So lots of things are constantly taking our power, power away. Our self-dialogue is very much here uh, an enemy of them. But the self-dialogue is only because you have certain beliefs about yourself that don't measure up to your expectations and that takes your power away. So yes, that's another one, isn't it? This self-esteem that we constantly look for, this, this need to be like somebody else. We're never going to be like anybody else because we're unique. So therefore, embrace that and be the most wonderful uniqueness that you can be. And stand out in a crowd for the right reasons because you're always at peace. You don't allow the outside world to influence you into making you less than what you are or what you choose to be. So what else takes our power away? Beliefs take our power away. It's so fascinating to me when people really think that beliefs are a fact, that they're truth. Beliefs are not truth. Beliefs are a thought that you have embraced that at the time seemed to be serviceable. Right? There are certain beliefs that are absolutely of service to you that I, be, I think you need to have, like, okay, that's up and that's down. You know, the beliefs in the sky is blue, the, the, you know, the grass is green, that's only because that is a collective consciousness that we all have agreed to so that we can communicate with each other. But, you know, there, <laughs> if you're colorblind, the grass probably isn't green for you. Does it make it wrong? No, it just makes it different. I love it. You know, I was standing somewhere the other day and there was a family in front of me and, oh, I was in the lift and um, they were talking about colour and he said, oh, I don't have a clue what colour. Oh, yes, they were looking for their parking level. And he said, I think we're in the purple level. I think it's purple. I'm not sure. And his girlfriend said, what do you mean you're not sure? And he said, well, I have difficulty between blue and purple and green and brown because I'm colourblind. And she goes, oh my God. For me, that just means, what do you mean you're colorblind? You just see colors differently. It doesn't mean that they're right or they're wrong. You just see them differently. And to me, that's really fascinating. You know, I often um, ask colorblind people, so, so how do you see it? Because that fascinates me. 
Okay, so that's just another way, right? It is our beliefs. So what do you believe that doesn't serve you? I'm constantly checking my beliefs. Does that belief still serve me? For instance, I don't believe in death. Now, I choose to not believe in death because it feels good. It empowers me. If I was afraid of death, if I thought death was the end of my life and there was nothing more, then I would be afraid of it and I would be in resistance of it. And you know, that would take enormous amount of time and joy out of my life. And I love my life too much to do that to myself and to life itself. It's inevitable that there is an end to this lifetime as this persona. But that doesn't end my life because I don't believe that I am this persona. I believe that who I am is the energy within that persona. And that is limitless, infinite and will go on forever. And I'm actually quite excited looking forward to the experience. It doesn't mean that I want to go today. I just know that when my time comes, I will be content and at peace with it. And I will have my eyes, either spiritual eyes or physical eyes or whatever eyes I will have, wide open to not miss a part of the transition. Now that makes me feel good. So if I was afraid of that, it would not make me feel good. And so really the answer to giving away your power and being aware of giving away your power is this feeling of not feeling good. When you don't feel good, it's because something else has your power. Now, I know people do a lot of these, what they call affirmations. Now, I don't call them that anymore. I call them, you know, inspirational statements because inspirational inspires, inspire, inspiration is breathing in life. So inspirational statements are of, an, of a, an uplifting vibrational frequency because we are continuously affirming. Every second of our day and night we're affirming. Every time we repeat anything, we are affirming it. Affirming just making it more concrete. And so if your dominant thinking is in fear, then you're making that concrete. It becomes an affirmation. So we are affirming as ourselves into our next experience all the time. So make your affirmations inspirational statements. So inspire life to them. You know, it's no good saying, I don't want to be sick. That's not an affirmation because you're focusing on sickness and what you focus on, you get more of. So when you change that to saying, I choose health, now that's an inspirational statement. When you have fear of lack, it's no good saying I want more money because you're coming from a state of lack. That's all that you're going to get. But if you say, I embrace all of my abundance around me every day in gratitude and I'm open to receive more. Well, now that's an inspirational statement. So be very, very conscious about the so-called affirmations that you say every day and where do they come from? Do they feel empowering to you or do you feel frightened that you're not going to get it and therefore you say them over and over and over again hoping that it's going to happen. Well, if you come from that place, you're coming from a disempowered place because then what you don't have has your power. So when you're asking for something, are you asking it because what you don't have has your power? Because if that's what you're doing, then it's never going to come. But if you're asking for something because you already have given your power to having it, uh, then it has the opportunity to find you. So there are many, many different ways that we give our power away. We can even give our power, we can give our power away to God. We give our power away to religion, to politics, to, um, we can give our power away to food, to alcohol, to substances of any kind. 
we give our power away to habits that are not serving us right so I really would like you to take a good look at your life and to feel consciously where am I giving my power away to something outside of me or to something inside of me my own thoughts my own beliefs the more conscious you become of it the easier it becomes to change it I don't give my power away very often anymore but the minute that I do you know little things like for instance um, if you are so I, I'm actually baking some um, no grain loaf at the moment um, so just imagine that you know you go to turn on I was in the middle of something the other you turn something on you know we're used to just turning on a switch and the power is there and then in the middle of it the power goes off do you in that moment then go what's happened where am I going I can't finish it your power has gone not only the electrical power but your power or do you go oh accept what it is and go oh okay this is what it is the power has gone out so I have to stop doing what I'm doing obviously and then you check why it's gone out and if there's nothing you can do about it you go do something else or do you then run stories about I wonder why the power is out I wonder how long it's going to be I wonder this I wonder that you know, we give our power away to stories that just go on and on and on and on. Just be present, accept what is, live in the now. You know, all of the same things you hear, the story you hear, the messages time and time again. The more present you are, the easier it is to stay empowered and to have the power working for you and not against you. So please... Please be conscious of where you bleed your energy out because when you give your power away to something, you bleed your energy out and then you feel tired, you feel less able to cope because you've just given your energy away. You know, if you get in your car and you give half of your petrol away or even half of your whatever power, you know, half the engine away, it's not going to run very well, is it? And that's what we do all the time. We give half of our engine away and we still expect to be running full bore. And it doesn't happen. And then we get really disappointed. And then we give our power away to disappointment. And on and on and on it goes. So how about we take stock today and we examine every moment of our lives more closely and go, am I in my full power or have I just allowed it to seep out? And don't judge yourself for it because that's giving your power away to judgment. Oh, by the way, judgment is one of the biggest bugaboos of taking your power away. So I'd love to hear from you and see some comments to see where you give your power away and how you've been able to counteract that because it's really, really fascinating to me, you know, how people manage that. And of course, if you I would like to have a private session with me, let me know. And all of my details of the work that I do, uh, the achievement plan, by the way, for those of you who are local, please, please, you know, think about starting the year on a high level of power and, and intention and join me on the 1st of January um, and at the achievement workshop. So... I hope this is going to give you some inspiration to take back your power and to live a fulfilled, full life. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Love yourself more. And when you do, love will come to you all the time. Namaste.